Have you ever met somebody that was so out of place? It's almost as if they weren't even there. I had the supervisor, Kate. One day, we had a discussion that turned to the unexplained, and she told me about something that happened when she was a teenager. She tries to debunk crazy things that have happened, but this is one she hasn't been able to. It was the summer after she graduated from high school, sometime in the second half of the 1990s. She was 18 at the time. Her friend, Billy, was a few years older, but still lived with his mother in their house. This was in a small city in Western Maryland, and Billy's house had just enough land that he could throw raging day-to-night summer parties complete with bonfires. At the same time, they weren't totally isolated, and random people from the surrounding neighborhoods would show up to his parties all the time. One day, Billy met this skater kid named Nick at a park, and being a social animal guy, Billy invited him to hang out with him at his house. Billy probably also took some pity on Nick because Nick told him that he was a runaway who was living at the park. They would basically play video games, go on rides, and party till late at night. But Nick started showing up every day at Billy's house, knocking at the door at 7 a.m. sharp and engaging him in the morning till night drinking. He was about 16, with dark eyes and dark spiky hair. Remember, this was the late 90s. And seemed fairly normal and everything, except for a couple of things. The first was that he always wore the same thing. A plain t-shirt and a pair of camel print cargo shorts. And despite the fact that he was sleeping at a park, his clothes always looked clean. The second is that he was never seen eating or going to the bathroom, despite the fact that Nick was drinking heavily with Billy. Finally, oddly enough, no one remembers actually feeling Nick's skin, even my supervisor, who sat next to him in a car doing a road trip. She hung out with Billy and Nick at Billy's house two times, and each time she and her friend felt like something was very off with Nick, especially when he would give off this laugh that just sounded very evil and maniacal. He also seemed to get kookier and weirder when they went on a road trip and got further away from Billy City. Nick would also never shut up about his father's gun collection. Finally, Billy's hospitality reached its limits. After two weeks of waking Billy up at 7 a.m. to go party, Billy snapped at Nick at his front door. He said, Look, Nick, you've been coming over here every morning for two weeks. You're waking up my mother, who's trying to sleep. You really need to go now. Please, just come back later. Then he slammed the door shut. Nick never showed up again. Billy came to Katie a little bit later with a newspaper article. It was about Nick, who had apparently killed himself. Nick had escaped from the mental asylum his parents had put him in that was located in Billy's town got into his father's house, and shot himself with his father's gun. Billy was originally upset because he felt like he must have put Nick over the edge when he kicked him out, until he checked the dates. Nick had committed suicide on July 10th, two weeks before they had met. Hey everybody. I'm Bella Deadwood, and thank you for watching my late and short video. I think posting these videos on Fridays is going to be a lot easier, mostly because there are a couple hours in the morning where I'm the only person home, and therefore there isn't a whole lot of ambient noise. Only my sister just walked through the door, so I don't know how long that's going to last. If you have a story that you would like narrated, you can either message me directly here on YouTube, along with a note saying that I have permission to uh, narrate your story on here, or you can type it up and post it over on our free horror stories over on Reddit. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, 
I'll leave you with your nightmares. Good night, guys.